Our first quarterfinal is between Catalonia and New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome first to the stage a former Catalonia and FCD anniversary open champion from Catalonia, Carlos Arrola! And his opponent, all the way from New Zealand, an eight-time WDF ranking champion. Please welcome Hoped Halpai Puha! Hello and welcome back to the WDF World Cup, the first night of finals here in Esbjerg in Denmark. My name is Andrew Sinclair and I'll be talking you through the action alongside very shortly the, the dulcet tones of our MC for the evening, Mr. Jack Newlack from the Netherlands. Um, but here we have our first men's singles quarter final between Carles Arola of Catalonia and Hopai Puha from New Zealand. Hopai is one of New Zealand's top players and uh, he was in very impressive form in, in reaching the, uh, the quarterfinals of the singles tournament. Uh, Carles, he's, he's been around a long time, plays a lot of darts in Catalonia and uh, produced some really impressive results to reach these quarterfinals. Averaged 98 in beating Switzerland's Stefan Belmont and then beat Raymond Smith in the last 16. And I'm now joined by Mr. Shaq Newlat. Shaq, how are you? Hello, so far so good. All Still alive. Well. <laughs> That's a, a result. All going smoothly. So uh, it's been, it's been a, a fun evening so far. Three goals for England, but no English players left in the men's singles. Eight nationalities represented in the, the four quarter finals, which is really that's what the whole World Cup is all about. Isn't it? Yeah, you get to see it more and more these last years that we held the uh, World Cups and even in the Europe Cups. You see the other countries also coming through, and it's a good thing for darts worldwide. No, absolutely. And uh, I mean, hope I, the, the New Zealand players have traveled a long, long way to be here. I was speaking to them the other day, and they said it was, I think it was 28, 30 hours yes. to get here. So to to be close to the medal stages, I know him and him and Ben are playing in the men's pairs later, but to be in the medal stages, it makes all that travel worthwhile. Yeah, that's what you're here for. There's no prize money, so you're playing for the medals, you're playing for the pride of playing for your country, and that makes the atmosphere so much different to a lot of the other tournaments. Yes, I know uh, 
I know Carlos and the whole Catalonia team are very proud to be here, although very disappointed that there's still no Catalonia flag on Twitter or Facebook. So uh, they're disappointed that it's not there, but maybe if Carlos wins, they can start the campaign. It's here. To get one. It's Antarctica, <laughs> yes, but it's not, it's not on social media yet. But hopefully, if they win, maybe there'll be a change. Now, I don't think many people would have uh, would have picked Carles before the tournament to get this far. If you have picked the last eight in this tournament, you're going to be a very very happy man lying somewhere under a palm tree. <laughs> Hopefully, a very wealthy man. <laughs> you will be then. <laughs> He's made a good start in this leg, Carles, down to 96 after 12. See if Hope I can put any pressure on him here. Well, he's served himself on the big fish. About all last first for 96. So travel 20 will leave double 18. He'll stay there. And go for double eight. Ah, almost. It's a nice first leg for Aurora, but Puha is in striking distance. Let's see what he can do with this one. The biggest one of them all. He's just under the treble. So it'll be a roller coming back. And that's it, the double eight goes in for the 58 year old from Calella near Barcelona. Yes, I think he's won the, the Catalonia Open before. Yeah, and the, uh, the FCD Anniversary Open, as they call it. I think that's basically in the same uh, vicinity. He's won the Catalonia Open 2015 and the Anniversary Open in 2019. And he's been in the uh, Catalonian team for a long time. <laughs> he's, he's a veteran of the team. Um, I'm sure they're all down there supporting him in the crowd, but... I mean, Hopai is someone who's really come through in the last few years. He's been playing a lot more of the, the WDF circuit. He qualified for Lakeside last year. He's qualified for Lakeside this year. And he's actually already qualified for Lakeside next year because he won the New Zealand Open uh, earlier this year. So he's someone who is really coming on all the time and obviously is, is looking towards achieving big things in the sport of darts. And he'll be hoping... New Zealand will be hoping that that starts to win in this World Cup season. Yes, it's, diffi it's difficult for the players that come from down under. I mean, if you want to go professional, you got to basically relocate to Europe somewhere. And he, I think he wants to do it, but the, well, that's, that's not the only thing you have to do, of course. But this is a good circuit for the New Zealanders and the Australians especially. It, it goes the same for the Americans. There's a lot of tournaments over there at the moment. And there's an actual chance, if you play well on those tournaments, to get to the World Championship or to the World Masters. The roads have opened in the last four or five years. No, absolutely. I think the WF is rewarding those countries and regions a lot more lakeside this December. At the moment, there are three uh, men from New Zealand and three women qualified. So to have six Kiwis in the field when, in the past, you maybe had... One man from the, the right regional oh, rankings. Well. And I've seen years when uh, someone won f the four biggest tournaments down under yet didn't make it to the World Championship because you couldn't earn enough points there. So, yeah, no, I mean, these guys are being rewarded and they're, they're, they're making the most of those opportunities. I know Hopi's still not won a game in a, in a World Championship. He's played Ali Pali, he's played Lakeside, but, you know, he had some success in the World Series tournaments this year in the PDC. And, Actually played in the World Series finals quite recently. Actually. Yeah, and and, and it's, it's it's all about experience as well. And for him, it takes a little bit longer. But I'm sure that a lot of people will have him on their list for Lakeside this year to go far. 41 for Puha to make it uh, one apiece. He's been really good on the outer ring this week. I've seen a lot of games of him and he's always been very confident there. I think that the thing that impresses me about Hope I having spoken to him and, and you know interviewed him in the past, nothing seems to phase him. He's a very calm, 
reserved individual and he just sort of he goes up there plays his game there's not a lot of emotion which a lot of the, the Kiwis and the Australians they, they tend to let you know how they're feeling up there yeah but I'm sure the emotions are there he just keeps them inside yes uh, his pairs partner Ben Robb who we'll see later on is uh, a much more emotional character on the hockey but, well we'll get to the pairs later on but that's what a great pair makes if you have one a bit extrovert and one bit introvert you usually get the best pairs <laughs> And some of the best pairs ever, Bristow and Lowe. Yep. <laughs> yep. Very different people. I'm talking black and white TV now, but <laughs> nevertheless. Yep. Positive start to this leg from Hopine with a 135 and a, a ton. Puts him 50 points ahead after two visits. First of five legs in this quarter final. Yeah, the defending men's uh, singles champion is out. He was from New Zealand, obviously. Darren Harawini. Yes, he he wasn't at his best this week, Darren. It was a, a couple of scratchy performances, and then he was beaten. I think it was the last 64 in the end that he went out, but. Uh, you know, he gave it his shot, and it, it was you know he was happy to be here to try and defend the title, but just couldn't quite get everything to click no. this week. But obviously, I'm sure he'll be pleased that you know. Hopefully, he'll be hoping another key week. Can oh, well, that he'll be in the up. crowd now, <laughs> cheering him on. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. He's always easy to recognise with the big sunglasses on. <laughs> it's quite the character, isn't he? I mean, we had, we did the draw here on stage on uh, Monday and. He was doing the draw as the defending champion, and he <laughs> well, it's nothing quite like uh, him. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, certainly a character. <laughs> One five six for Arola. The first traveller is in. The second nearly missed, or near miss, I should say. And Puha with a chance to break Arola's throw. Treble seventeen. Give him double eight. He went that way. Should go 15s now. Single leaves the bull. It's a single 15. So Arola will come back for 75. Probably going to go 15 first. For no, treble 17. Should no. leave double 12. And Arola may be a bit fortunate, but keeps his own leg. And Puha is still in the chase. He's got a nice action, Puha. It's all very deliberate. He finishes the throw very well. But Arola, it looks a bit more sloppy. Yeah. Is that the correct word? My yeah. English is not my <laughs> mother language, so. Sometimes I may get things a little bit confused, but it's a bit more disjointed. But yeah, yeah. No, Hope I's got a very sort of traditional, traditional throw. But something he's mentioned to me in the past is that playing darts in New Zealand, most of what they do starts with a round robin. Mm -hmm. And he said the biggest adjustment coming over to the UK and Europe in the past has been that you're going on stage and you're just playing straight away. And he's used to at home. If I don't hit top gear in the group stage, it doesn't really matter because I'm probably still going to win most of those games. Yeah. But then I get to the stage in the UK or whatever, and it's suddenly like, oh, okay, I'm a bit cold now because yeah, I'm coming in a bit cold because you know it's uh, you know I've got to go straight up on the stage and, and play, whereas I haven't really had those few games to break myself in. He'll get used to it, I'm sure. Certainly, if he achieves what he wants to achieve you know, and pursues yeah. that, he'll, he will, for sure. And I think we're starting to see signs of that. He was impressive at the Australian Open you know, a month or so ago and had those good results in the World Series. Yeah, you can see now for the last few legs, his scoring power is there as well. He was really good in the first World Series event, I think it was in New Zealand, where he beat uh, Nathan Aspel, I think it was in the first round. With a ton average, I mean, with a ton average, you can nearly beat everyone. <laughs> yeah. 
Double 16, I think. No, double 14. Uh, Mr. Uh, Big uh, Six. Uh, hit the 10 and hit the double 14. That's the most important uh, thing. Yeah, you've got to hit the double. But still, a roller is driving the bus. Yeah, first four legs with throw. Oh. Catalunian opens this leg five with a steady ton. Am I right in thinking, Jack, you probably know this better than me, if he wins, will that be Catalunya's first medal at a World Cup? I will check for you straight away. Because I do have a list somewhere with all the medals ever, so I'll check that for you. Yes, I, ca I can't imagine if, if he's not, they've won I, many. I think I, I think I would have remembered, to be honest, but <laughs> I, 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 if I say something that isn't true, no, this, it will be the first. It's desperately trying to remember your, your introduction to the opening ceremony. So do I. <laughs> it seems so long ago. This is the world first 180 of the match, and it goes to Catalonia. It's a very strong start to this leg from Arola. Yeah, New Zealand, they have a few medals on their uh, tally. Yep. Already picked up two in this World Cup. Yep. In the pairs competitions. and. Yeah, we, we haven't counted them, to be honest. You first have to get the medal before you get it on your tally. That's how we do it. <laughs> but they've got four goals so far. Another big visit from Arola there, down to 81 after nine. Can Puha put any pressure on? He won't be on a finish, but two trebles here would narrow the distance a little bit if Arola's not able to take this out. He should take the smart approach here, Arola. Not too much uh, problems, but he gets the treble 19, so that leaves double 12, and he's hit that one before. <laughs> Step to the side. Oh, just inside. But Pou Puha is a little bit back. <laughs> yes. But again, a big visit here suddenly makes that 12 a little bit more pressurised. He needs two trebles to put some pressure on, and he doesn't get them. So it looks like this one is going Catalunya's way. He's got six starts from here, at least, Mr. Arola. Takes the Richard Ashdown special. What will be interesting to see is because Carles has reached the quarterfinals here, that gives a fair few points to Catalonia. And their best finish in a World Cup overall is 25th. So I'm not sure how far it's going to get them up the list, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be close to the 25th spot. Yeah, I think their men's team progressed in the team event as well, so that will obviously have helped. Yep. Um, and one of their other players, Raul, Raul Invernon, on, yeah. he got to the last 32, I want to say. Uh, I remember when I was posting the update on the WDF channels that there was no Catalonia flag and it was a problem for two people. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Puha started the stronger in this leg, which is kind of following the pattern of the match so far, is that the man on throw has held his own throw without too much resistance. Well, that leads, if it continues, to a 4 all, and then we're going to go bull up to see who starts the last one. A pretty important bull up that will be. Yes, of course, because the, the format here at the World Cup is slightly different to what people would normally do. We use the, the random button on, on Dark Connect to decide who goes first, and then, as Jack said, when it gets to 4 all, you bull up for that deciding leg, whereas traditionally you bull up at the start, and whoever wins that would have to throw in the last leg. Well, traditionally, you would take a ball out of a bag. That's really <laughs> traditional. <laughs> Again, there's a lot of uh, room between the two in this leg. Arola not hitting on all cylinders, firing on all cylinders in this one. And not able to put any pressure on this 87. So, pull up, treble 17s, to leave double 18. Pretty sure he's going to go 18s here. Yep. And he leaves his favourite double, which is double 16. Good thinking by the Kiwi.
Lager is low there for Arola. She's not able to put any pressure on, so Hopi comes back for double 16. Pins it second time round. 17 dart leg makes us three all. I think this might be our first game of the evening that's going all of the way. I'm your lucky charm. <laughs> See? That's how it works. Yeah. See, he's on his own throw and a, a roller starts with a 1 2 5. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a feeling that Puha might want to stick with him this time. Usually in matches first to five, we're halfway through, they, these are the important legs. And you have a feeling, or I have a feeling, that Puha is a bit more accustomed to these circumstances probably than Arola is. Yes, certainly more used to the pressure, I would think, than uh, Carlos has, has been through before. But he's not showing any signs of, of, of wilting under that pressure at the moment. And that goes into the single seven. 46. So 46 means Carlos has got quite a good advantage in this leg. Now. Where his darts lie so flat in the board, it makes it a lot easier to kind of stack yep. the treble. I mean, I say that, I'm a man of very limited skill. <laughs> Well, it depends what you like. If you like stacking, then Arola is the way to go. If you like under stacking, which Puha likes, then the back end of the dart has to be up a, um, a little bit further. And for me, hitting the board would be a plus. So. <laughs> Arola with a single 18 will leave tops. Getting a good leg on his own dart. Yeah, very strong. He's a specialist. So if it does go 4 all, I'm sure both of the players will be hoping to win the dart. Well, if your nickname is Hopes, yep. yes, then hope is what you live for. <laughs> and, he and he pins Tom's first start, 13 dark leg. Mr. Aroma is now one away from the semi finals in a first WF World Cup medal for Catalonia, which would be a special moment for him. We've already seen a couple of countries win their first medals at this tournament yeah uh, but uh, I'm sure he would be delighted to to, to do that for for Catalan. And I'm sure Mr. Puha won't be going down without a fight <laughs> no exactly but Arola is in the troubles and he has been for two legs now oh, and he's, that's the first real bit of emotion mm. mixed in this final and I don't blame him it's an important <laughs> moment Puha can't answer. Out. Arola has got control of the leg. And he capitalised. Did a little search on Arola what he's done this year, but to be quite honest, he hasn't done much this year in ranking events, only the Catalonia Open, where he reached the last 16, got beaten by Dutchman Patrick Maat. Well, it's never a shame to lose to a Dutchman, I always say. <laughs> Yeah, so he played the one tournament on home soil and that was about it. Yeah, and then came to Denmark to reach the quarterfinals. <laughs> and potentially a little bit more. He's on his way to a medal. Not on a finish just yet with that 99. He's on 177 after nine, but he's got the advantage in this leg. And Puha's filling it up. The important visit by Pua leaves him on a 115. But Arola can put it away a little bit better if he hits a trouble somewhere. And he does. How did that last fight. one go in? That was a great Pua on 115. He needs it to stay in the match. 20's first. He's hit the trouble. Single 15 leaves tops. He's got one dart to stay in it. Just the wrong side of the wire, so Arola, 
92 for the match and for a bit of World Cup history. Is he going 25s or is he going treble 20? He's going 25s, but he's missed it. 77 left. He needs a treble now. Treble 19. We'll leave him double 10. He's got it. One dot for the match. How costly could that prove to be? Hope by steps up. Three darts at tops to level the scores. He's trying to keep the arm loose. There must be some tension on it. Inside goes for the tens. Inside again, chasing that's around the board now. That's way inside. That is the pressure. And that means Arola is coming back for Catalonian history. He needs double ten. What a moment. What a moment for Catalonia as Carlos Arola pins double ten for a 16 dart leg to beat Hopai Puha of New Zealand 5-3. I thank Jacques for joining me for that game. But what a, what a moment that is for Carlos Arola. Pointing to his fans in the crowd, pointing to the Catalonia team. He's won their first ever medal at a WDF World Cup. He surprised a lot of people by getting to this quarter final. But he's going to surprise a lot more now because he'll be coming back tomorrow to play in the semi-finals. Very impressive performance in that game from Arola. Just shy of an 89 average for the Catalonian. Tomorrow, he will be playing the winner of our next semi-final, which is between the Dutchman, Berry van Peer, and the American, Bruce Robbins. We'll be back very shortly for that second quarter final. But uh, stay tuned, we'll be back.